I was, I was hoping you'd do some moves. Uh, we'll see. Okay. Reluctant. That's good. Hi, guys. How you doing? Hey, this is fun. Dance team at Change. It's all happening. You should lead the troop, Saxon. You should lead the troop. I had some mean moves myself when I was at school. But a few dancing moves as well, you know. <laughs> and uh, I wish I, I was I was a um, remember you know limbo. Oh, yeah. And I was a limbo champ. I was a limbo champ. I was flexible, you know. Not anymore. It's like oh. But uh, hey, that's great. Yeah, uh, report. Yep, yeah, you've already given the report on Josh. He's he's doing okay. Uh, and uh, I said to him, "You're not 15 anymore. No more jumping off blowholes." He's 27 year old married man with a ministry responsibility. You know, be responsible. But that's not going to change him, is it, Georgie? Nah, no. Nah, we don't really want him to change. You know. But anyway, it's all good. But he's he. Uh, thank. I got up the following morning and just I was just praising God and thanking God. Uh, because it could have been a lot worse. I just these horrible images of, you know, your son with a, you know, with spinal damage and all those horrible things, uh, and and obviously he's got a broken back, but he's got no spinal damage and he can he's got his movement and he will be okay as much as that he's in a lot of pain. And I think, oh, thank you, Jesus. And there's so much to thank God for, right? And thank you, Jesus. Um, and it was, a, it was a tough week that week. Tough week. Uh, we Bernie and I were uh, getting uh, Helen McIntyre's. Uh, funeral together on all day Monday here actually a lot, a lot of it with Georgie and her team and and everybody and then that night we got a phone call from you guys in the hospital uh, Josh has broken his back and and uh, spent most of that evening with Georgie and Josh in the hospital and you know you never know where these surprises are going to come from and the, the not good surprises on top of a really tough week and and uh, walking through with Simon and the kids and, and of course, Helen and everything. Uh, it's pr- pretty, pretty tough, but, hey, you keep pushing through and God's on the throne and it's, and it's, uh, uh, it's, it's interesting. It's a major era. Uh, that's, Helen passing is the, the first of that original team that has gone to be with the Lord. And we've all been traveling together and journeying together for 28 years. And for some of that original team to not be with us, uh, Albie, it's been a long time, but still Helen is very, very young. I mean, she was 53 years of age. That is young. Uh, but at the same time, it was a real, uh, uh, a good wake-up call for all of us, for me. You know, you, you don't know when your days are. And Helen McIntyre, in my mind, was an unbelievable legend. She had 1,350 people at her funeral, the biggest funeral in, our, in the history of our church, for a person who's never spoken, I don't think I've ever seen a preach, not a public platform ministry, was one of the quietest people in our church, and yet the more people came out to her funeral, for, I reckon for two reasons. One is because she always treated people with love and grace and mercy. Secondly, she loved the house of God and never, ever compromised. Even until, up until three weeks before she died, she would be at meetings sick as a dog. She went through over 150 chemotherapy treatments. I don't know whether you realize you know, how brutal one chemotherapy treatment is on your body. But to go through over 150 of those over a five-year period... And in, over that five-year period, never heard her complain once. I asked her hundreds of times, Hilly, how are you, sweetie? How you doing? How you feeling? Great. Great. After, this is like the day after a chemotherapy treatment when she's feeling nauseated and her, all her hair has fallen out. She's feeling sick to the core. And she's going, great. And she would be at meetings and raising her hands, begging her husband Simon to take me. I'm going to church going to the house of God. That, to me, is an example of someone worth following who, who, you know, and so don't let her passing be of no value to you. I mean, there's the grief aspect, there's a loss, and most of you didn't know her that close. I mean, obviously you knew her as as one of the pastors in the church, but 
Can I just say, don't let her loss be of, of a loss to you in the sense that it, it doesn't have any value. Let the value of her life and the example that she lived be an example to you and I because at that funeral, there were uh, a whole bunch of people, you know, but there were, there were several, probably a couple of hundred people who had dislocated their life from the house of God. Uh, and, and I knew most of them personally, and I knew it pretty well every one of their stories. And some of the stories are tragic stories. And I, Pastor Phil and I were talking afterwards saying, they're, they're, how could people sit in that funeral and see the testimony of that life and hear the stories and see the result of that life in all these people coming to celebrate her life and not be affected by the way she lives and not go, what am I doing? What and, and, and the next Sunday be running to the house of God as a result of that. Because I know several of them are people who have, for whatever reason, over the years have gone, well, you know, stuff you and you've hurt me and I'm out of here and I'm, I'm rejecting this. And their own lives have fallen apart. To, to many of them have, they've, have they've tragic situations right now where their marriages have broken up and their kids are not following the Lord anymore and they've backslidden and in some cases they're actually on drugs and what have you. These are people who are in the ministry. These people who are in, the, in full-time ministry. And it's, but they're sitting there now watching a life as awesome as Helen McIntyre's and should be going, you know what? I'm an idiot. I reckon the I'm an idiot revelation is one of the most amazing revelations... <laughs> Who's ever had that revelation? I've had it several times. I'm right. And you've got to go like this. It goes like this. Wait a minute. I'm an idiot. At that moment, revival is hitting you. We think revival is like, oh, 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 there it is. Then that's good to have that sort of revival as well. No, no, no. Revival's hitting when you go, I'm an idiot. I am a flippin' idiot. And things like, Things like, okay, along the lines of um, get my life back to church. Just getting your life back to church. And if you've lost the routine of that, then go, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm a weirdo. Yes. Get the I'm an idiot revelation on that issue. You know, go, I'm, an, I'm a nut. I need to get my butt back into gear. I need to get my butt back into church. And not occasionally. Don't be an occasional Christian. Be a full-on Christian. Be a real Christian. Be a regular one. Be a one who's leading your friends into that zone as opposed to the one who other friends are dragging you along. You know, Don't be the ones where you've got this, this like drag marks all the way. You know, Some people, it's drag marks all the way to church. Drag marks all the way to water baptism. Drag marks all the way to tithing. You know, Drag marks all the way to baptism of the Holy Spirit. Drag marks all the way to serving. Drag marks all the way to leadership. At the end of your life, you go after 40 years, 50 years, whatever. Uh, not that you, you live that long. I'm talking about 40 or 50 years. Of, of following God life, you go, you know what? I should have got in, I should have got in early. I should have, I should have, I, sh I, I, I should have, you know, gotten flowed a bit early. Don't do the I should have be right now. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. And be, and be a person who's easy to lead and, and, and be the one, in fact, leading others along that way. Because I'm telling you, it is awesome. That's the way God wanted. That's the way God intended it for you. If you've been hanging around for a long time and you're the reluctant recruit on everything, don't. Stop it. Stop it tonight. Stop being like that in Jesus' name. Uh, and, but if you're new, then be a person who quickly does, does things, who quickly gets a hold of things.